Mr. Call Chair. the Honourable Member Catherine Delahunty. Tenakwe, Ms. Delahunty. Tenakwe, Mr. Chair. Thank you for recognising me and allowing me to take a call. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I knew I would be. Um, Mr. Chair, the goal of the education system should be to help all kids reach their potential and create a fairer society for all. But unfortunately, the estimates fails to deliver on this issue. And it's not about disputing endlessly the amount of money, because in fact, more money will always be spent every budget on education, otherwise we'll be slipping further back, let alone standing still. That's just the reality. So there really isn't any point in having that debate about who spent the most money. That is not the issue. We don't need to, to fight over that. But the estimates have failed to actually address the elephant in the room which holds back many of our communities, which is poverty. And while we ignore and deny poverty and say that's irrelevant to educational achievement, we're always going to have difficulties with the education system. It doesn't really matter, Mr Chair, how many lime green squabs and classrooms with sliding doors you create and call it a modern learning environment. If the children are arriving at school and are reliant on charity for breakfast because their parents aren't earning enough money, and it doesn't really matter if they're sick and there is no school nurse because the school nurse has been taken away and she was only part-time anyway to work on the rheumatic fever program somewhere else. So we have got to acknowledge the context and I think it's really important that we, we recognise the education system is not in a happy state and the government can't say that vote education has solved the issues. And I think the previous speaker, when speaking about the, um, the targets on charter schools, was reminding us that an enormous amount of money is going into fringe experiments because the government say they have this goal of five out of five. But what they fail to recognise is that five out of five of our children are not getting fed, are not well, are not having access to resources, and that we have the greatest inequality in this country that we've had in many, many generations. And I'm quite ashamed to live in a country now where I see older people begging on the streets, that never happened in my childhood, and children going to school hungry. The Green Party recently did a tour where we promoted a very positive response that is not in the estimates, which is the Community Hubs Plan. And what that's about is making sure that we actually provide for kids in the school. So that there is a free lunch, there is a school nurse per um, every 400 children in one to four decile schools, so that there is after school care and free Oscar programs available to these kids so that they get the things that other children, that the middle class children, the upper class children get of right. The extra after school activities that otherwise you have to pay for. And when we toured the um, mainly decile one to four schools, it was really interesting to talk to principals and teachers about the issues. Some of those schools didn't have lime green squabs and sliding doors, but what they did have was absolutely dedicated principals and teachers who wanted the best academic opportunity for these students, but who recognised that without the school having a good relationship with the local community, having food there to feed the kids, having a uh, an ability for those kids to participate in learning and, and to have a good time and to have cultural experiences that other kids take of right, that there would not be that five out of five. And so it, it's fine to talk about all these wonderful things. And we support digital literacy and we, and we love lime green squabs. It's great. But the reality is we need to listen to what our decile one to school teachers and principals are telling us about the kids. Now, the government has made a strong argument that things like te kotahitanga um, should be frozen because they're expensive, apparently, and that building on success is the new way to bring forward cultural inclusion. Well, actually, te kotahitanga has been very successful because of, just like school hubs, it put a person in the school to support the profession to meet the needs of Māori children in particular. And so... When we start talking about really making a difference, it isn't going to be about spending money on constantly revising programs and getting rid of ones that work. We need to uphold the fact that we need people in the school system who have the skills, whether it's the school nurse or the te kotahitanga facilitator, or whether it is quality early childhood with 100% chained teachers. We can't talk about quality in one breath and then in the next breath say, 
We're going to open up early childhood to Kitty Corp. We're going to allow charter schools from naught to eight, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. I call Mr. the Honourable Chair. Member Catherine Delahunty. So we have this very odd estimate in vote education this time around the Minister's new idea, which is that babies aged nothing to the, and children to the age of eight should be allowed to be in charter schools. And we know that it was the Minister's idea because we've seen on the Cabinet paper that, or the report that she received from the Ministry, she wrote it in her own handwriting. What a, you know, this is the idea, to add this to the criteria. So we see these very odd experimental fringe ideas which come from an international system called the GERM. And if, if people are not aware of what the GERM is, the GERM is the Global Education Reform Movement and it's based on the market philosophy that education is the new frontier where we can all make money. And we can turn it all into a franchise. And this has been attempted with very minimal success in the United States and Britain. And these are not the places we should be using as the models for a modern education system. We need to go back to the fundamentals. And the fundamentals are not narrowing the curriculum to a narrow definition of literacy and numeracy. The money that's been spent in the estimates on professional development around national standards will not succeed because those standards are neither national nor a standard and what they have done is have reduced children's confidence in themselves and teachers' confidence in themselves. And if there's one thing we know about learning is you've got to be confident, we have to be confident that we can do things. And if we're constantly told that we are below standard or that we are failing our children because we have taken kids for whom English may be a second language and moved them up in their ability to learn, to read, to write, to think, to talk, to participate, but that doesn't meet standard, then the teacher is a failure? I don't think so. And if the child who has come to school with barriers that hopefully no one in this house has ever faced in terms of poverty, dislocation, transience, possibly no English, all of those experiences if, this, if those children are expected to meet a standard and then called a failure when they have hugely improved as a result of the efforts of teachers, then we have missed the bus about what learning is. Because learning is not a tick-the-box mechanistic exercise. We don't need tick-the-box exercises. We need to take the New Zealand curriculum, we need to take the cultural experiences of some of our expert um, people who are involved in looking at what makes it work, and we need to invest in that. And yes, it takes money, but there is no greater investment, Mr Chair, than in our children. And there is no greater investment than in recognising that children who are hungry and communities that are alienated from education require our attention in the most profound way. And it's not rocket science, but there are people out there who are growing food in schools, who are teaching people to cook in schools, who are building adult and community education back into schools, despite the government cutting it out of the previous budget in 2008. We are seeing excellent practice going on in our schools, and there are people with a lot to tell us. And we should be listening to those people very carefully before making up experiments like the naught to eight charter schools or the limited authority to teach without any professional commitments being allowed to be expanded to three years, which is what the new education amendment bill will do. So we are disappointed that um, the estimates, um, voters estimates does not meet the real need. And we do consider it an underperforming economy when 290,000 children live in poverty. And it doesn't matter how many stats we, we hear in this house about how successful everything is if our kids are hungry, if they cannot learn, and if our schools are underfunded. Because we have to invest in changing that cycle and empowering those kids and their families to believe that they are entitled to participate in society as well as all the things that the privileged have. And that can be done. The Greens have a positive and modern vision for how that can be done. And it was awesome to travel, Mr Chair, and to get positive feedback from all of these people who work at the front line saying, yes, we want to be in that relationship with our communities. We would appreciate your support. We are creative with our funding. We don't expect the earth. But what we do want is to be able to build these relationships alongside you. And that's what we believe the School Hubs program and putting kids at the heart means. Because if children rather than rhetoric are at the heart of our decision making, we are going to get a different outcome. The school system does need to be constantly scrutinised. 
It's important that we check ourselves in terms of what we're doing. But we should not be adopting the germ and the fringe experiments simply because they offer, offer an ideological consistency with the idea of um, education being business and it's just another market. Thank you, Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Member Maggie Barrett. Thank you, Mr Chair. It is with great pleasure I rise to speak about...